Recently, Black Lives Matter came under fire for its purchase of a $6 million compound in Los Angeles. Now the former leader of the organization is defending that purchase, say, uh, denying that she actually misused those funds. Yeah, Patrice Cullors tells the Associated Press, we really wanted to make sure that the Global Network Foundation had an asset that wasn't just financial resources. And we understood that not many black-led organizations have property. They, they don't own their property. Hmm. Uh, interesting topic there. Now, joining us to discuss is Executive Director Standing for Freedom Center, Ryan Helfenbein, Helfenbein pardon me, and host of Money Talk with Melanie and Project 21 member Melanie Collette. Thanks to both of you for being here. Uh, you know, let's just kind of dive in to kind of these topics right here. You know, let's start with you, Melanie. I'd love to get your, get your take on kind of what we've just been talking about right there. Maybe I'm crazy, but I think that she could have simply Googled how to set up a nonprofit. <laughs> I don't I, I, I don't know. I think when you have that kind of money, you have access to tons of people that could have cautioned her on separating that money properly. She could have put that money in a in a totally separate bank account. I, I submit to you that if she went to any bank and said, listen, I have all this money that's donated. I'd like to start a nonprofit, and that any average customer service agent would have showed her how to properly set up a nonprofit bank account. Yeah, like, this is not difficult. She, she, but she, what she did was she took all this money, put her finger in the air, and said, "You know what? Uh, black um, nonprofits don't have properties." I think we'll buy property. It, it is ridiculous. It's an excuse, and, and quite frankly, it's BS. She could have called me. She could have said. She could have <laughs> emailed me at moneytalkwithmelanie at gmail .com, and We're I would have given her some advice. <laughs> oh, I know, because you know you you know all all about the money. Um, and and uh, by the I way, she also here. told the AP the notion that she hid BLM funds in her own personal bank account is quote a false narrative saying it's impacted me personally and professionally that people would accuse me of stealing from black people. And Ryan, what was really kind of amusing to me over the past few weeks is where she she was shocked and took offense that the IRS would actually want you to account for where you put the money. Somehow this was offensive. Well, this is the same standard everybody else is being held to. Any C3 organization, nonprofit understands that. Look, you have to be above board, and there is going to be transparency, and there is going to be accountability, especially when it comes to monies that are being donated. And you cannot have it both ways. The reality is it reveals the amateur nature, nature of this organization. Uh, the Marxist notion of, of uh, being trained Marxist, right? And then at the same time, um, using woke corporations, woke capital, Wall Street uh, as the big fundraising mechanism in order to bring all this money in. The reality is, is once it came in, they didn't know exactly what to do and how to manage it in the first place. So yeah, I think we're all seeing this now and it's being exposed. You may be charitable, no pun intended, because, you know, there's some people say it's not just being amateurish. It looks like crook activity, right? I mean, it looks like somebody's taking money and doing something on their personal behalf. Mm -hmm. That's part That's of the problem. Like All right, let, let's move on to this. Talk about Florida Governor Ron DeSantis for a moment. Manhattan's Museum of Jewish Heritage reportedly barring a philanthropic group featuring DeSantis from appearing at the Holocaust Memorial in June. Um, the Tikva fund leaders told the Wall Street Journal that they had to disinvite DeSantis or take their Jewish leadership conference elsewhere. The museum, which has hosted the likes of AOC, Andrew Cuomo in the past, denies it barred DeSantis, saying in the tweet, this is not a free speech or censorship issue. The fund is trying to create a fight where none exists. This was simply a contractual and logistical decision. Um, Melanie, I, I don't know. Is it the understanding I have is somebody said they, they're not in sync with all the views that DeSantis has, and they felt uncomfortable going forward. Isn't that what the research you've done as well? Right, and they said it was about inclusivity. And you know what gets me about the left and inclusivity? Uh, they, they, there's something in education called modeling. Uh, it's a teaching strategy. And the way the left models inclusivity is by excluding people. There and you I go. find that, like, super ironic. <laughs> they, always, they always model inclusiveness by excluding people.
telling you. They do it in social media. They do it like as soon as you don't do what they want you to do, they exclude you. And they constantly exclude people that don't act the same way they do or don't think the same way they do. They right. exclude you. They are the least inclusive people on the face of the earth. Certainly when it comes to conservative thought, anybody that disagrees with them, they consider a threat. Absolutely. Uh, a little scary. Ryan, your take on, on that one, I mean, it, it's kind of uh, slightly hypocritical, to say the very least. Yeah, it reminds me of the old adage, it was maybe 20 years ago, we will not tolerate intolerance, right? That, that was being thrown <laughs> around as a slogan for a long time. The reality is it was just two years ago that members of the left, extreme members of the left, including AOC, were a part of the boycott, divest, and sanction movement. This was an anti-Semitical movement. And I, I have to just say, look at the hypocrisy here as a Jewish museum not recognizing that uh, some, of the, some of the biggest things that are coming out of the state are, are movements for free speech and inclusion. And uh, DeSantis certainly represents the, uh, the side of freedom. Well said, Ryan Helfenbein and Melanie Collette, thanks so much and we'll see you in just a few minutes.